yeah, should we jump into the integration discussion here? I'm, I know I'm, I'm excited for it. I know, I know you probably have a lot to say on uh, this week's uh, topic, which is run deck. I don't necessarily know where I want to take it, but I know I want to take it somewhere. So let's let's dive in and, and see right. where it goes. So run deck is per the official documentation. Okay. Runbook automation. Give anyone self-service access to the operations capabilities that previously only your subject matter experts could perform. Popular use cases include incident management, business continuity, service requests, or just spreading the operational load among your colleagues. Most server administration is done with either one of two things. Either it's done in the AD GUI, ADUC, or it's yep. done in uh, command line scripts, right? And, and you know, sysadmins, I mean, we, as long as it works, it's good enough. Oh, is it, well, okay, let me walk that back. As long as it works and it's <laughs> documented, it's good enough. Sure, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, and, and, and those two steps, I think, are the prerequisites to creating an automation front end, well, or, or to using, effectively using an automation front end. And I, I like to have this mental picture in my mind of, of levels of automation, almost three concentric circles, right? With, with the innermost being what you were talking about, that, that scripting or, or that, that understanding of if I have this issue or I run into the scenario or I need to do this, then there is a script to be run, right? right? Obviously, those scripts take time to develop. You know, there are subject matter experts that need to put those together that need right. to to make sure that they're maintained and stuff. So so you have that core. And, and sometimes it's just, it's just a simple command or it's like a it's a three step process where you have to uh, take take three actions to get to the end result. Right. So, so that's kind of the core of automation. Automation is, is not complicated. It's not a huge buzzword, as, as I'm sure you're going to go into later. But all it, all it is, is is simply knowing what to do when and then putting some kind of uh, automation around what to do. Would you say some trigger around what to do? Actually, that's... Put, th yeah, because I heard you say put automation around automation. And I yeah, yeah I'd that's just, clear, that's just true. clarify that. Yeah, put put like a, a a trigger or a framework around that. You know, some some kind of way that that manages the processes that other would otherwise would be kicked off manually, right? right? So so how do we manage those being kicked off, right? And on the other side of it, right? So so skipping skipping the the middle circle, right? So so the 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 larger circle, the the thing that you can only have once everything else is fully formed, is automated remediation or orchestration where there is a a series of events that self-correct right or or self-balance or 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 keep everything aligned kind of kind of the magic that devops is supposed to perform right so so you have that orchestration that is that is kind of managing everything else all of the lower level aspects of the day-to-day -day operations of what you're doing as a systems yeah. administrator. Right? Um, in the middle is is some kind of automation front end where you want to encapsulate your scripts or processes that can can be kicked off and managed from a central location, and sure. yeah. th that's it's important for several reasons, right? The the first one is sharing between people, right? Because you, you obviously, if I run a command line on a script, the only way that I'm going to be able to share that output with, with someone is taking a screenshot and then forwarding it over to them, right? And the most frustrating thing I ran into was we have all of our coworkers running on disparate systems with different environments, the same scripts, and you're getting different outcomes. That should never, ever, ever be the case. Right? How about that? That's pretty interesting that you have that playing out like that. Yeah, especially if I'm running from one server and then someone else is running from a jump host and then someone's running locally on what you're operating on, you're going to get three different results. If a script is written to only operate on the host that it's being run on, you can't run it remotely, right? right. I mean, so 
so if you try to do that, you're going to mess everything up. And, and if I had just told them, well, just run the script, right? Um, that may not have been enough information, probably a documentation fault on my end, but it, it, it wasn't, it didn't have those bumpers that is, that are crucial in working in a team. Like, like we're obviously you want to communicate and, and be, be in, in, in contact with each other and, and kind of keep, keep passing information back and forth and, and working in tandem. But having an automation front end puts a, a guideline, puts guidelines in front of, you know, what is actually expected when you run this, especially when it comes to like what information is needed for these scripts, right? So that's, right. that's another thing. Not only, not only do, do the scripts need to be run, right? But like, what is optional to run the script and, you know, what is needed and, Obviously, scripts usually, if they're well written, have error handling built into them. If a necessarily parameter isn't passed or or something of that sort, right? However, the the process to get there can be super frustrating. If I start to run a script and it asks me for another piece of information, I'm like, oh, okay, now I got to go look that up and pull it in, put it in there, run it again. Oh, I need this other piece of information, right? Yeah. If I knew that up front, I could go get everything I needed, plug it in, run it. I'm done. done. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm done. Rather that than, saves... oh, I need one more parameter. Oh, well, I need one more parameter. Oh, well, I need, you know, it you just exactly. turn into going on, going on a big search for everything exactly. rather than knowing what's right in front of you at the time or yeah, knowing so, what so, you need right there. So it, that even makes it easier to share with other people. If you say, hey, I wrote a script. You're like, great. Can it run like on my local computer? You're like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Right. So this this puts a framework around it that says, okay, here's the environment that it's set up in. Here are the parameters that it needs right in front of you. I can, I, and I've had I've had a wild success with putting people in front of what we use uh, at at my own job and saying, you know, here's here's the front end, right? Uh, can you run it for me? And and they'll spend a couple of minutes kind of poking around and say, oh. Oh, I, I, I need a server list. Oh, I, I can do that. You know, you can grab a server and, and paste it in. Oh, okay. Well, what environment is this? Well, uh, this is the development environment. Oh, oh it's a drop down, and I can select the yeah. development environment, right? And uh, oh, there's a there's a big go button or, or run button right there. I can yeah. I can click that. Oh, oh, it's running. Oh, that's <laughs> you know, and and it's 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 very intuitive to work out. I think that's a nice necessary feature of automation front ends as well is, is that it has an intuitive. intuitive. It's intuitive. Yeah. 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 That's absolutely. the key word there. Cause you can just look at it and anyone can figure it out. Anyone can say, Oh, well I need to apply patches. Okay. Well, this is the patching folder, the patching script. All right. What month, you know, what month is it? All right. It looks like it's October. So we'll run the October patches. Cause, and what servers do you want to apply to? Oh, our development servers and another do drop down. You know, anyone can figure it out if they know what they're doing. They, exactly. they don't have and, to know what they're doing. They don't have to know what they're doing. That's the that's the nice part about it being intuitive. It just works. Yeah, anyone could do it. You want to give them an intuitive interface because you know it's it's easy to call people stupid or you know it's 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 easy to get frustrated with coworkers when they're not used to your workflow, right? And and sure, it works sure. for you and Absolutely. it doesn't work for them, right? And this is this is a great equalizer because they don't need to know everything you do about how you set everything up. If you're able to make it run in that automation front end, then they will as well. Like that's that's what makes right. it so Just, beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and also a lot of these automation front ends of which Rundeck is is probably my favorite is that they generally have an API that can be used, right, yeah. programmatically. So once I've once I've started defining those like inputs, once I've started defining those variables that I need in order to run the script, I can make an API call to that from some kind of outside tool. And this is where we start getting to talk about the the orchestration and the the real magic, the real kind of cool stuff. That can make calls to my automation front end and run those programs, run those scripts, run those commands like I would. Right? And, sure. and there's a benefit to this as well that it provides me a front end and it provides me an API because you could just say, okay, why can't the orchestration just run? You could say, why can't the orchestration just, you can say, why can't the orchestration just run when I need it to run? Why does it have to go through the front end API? Why can't it just talk to the servers? And, and it probably can. But the problem there then is, well, how do you get your script from manually running it 
and and making sure it works all the time, which orchestration really does need, works repeatedly in in a deterministic fashion. How do you get it from? How do you get it to there so that the orchestration can then come in and work with that script? You don't have to worry about it, right? And right. the way you do that is by constant testing. Now you can set up automated testing, and that's something else that automation front ends can can work on. Where you have this API, you can run like nightly tests, and you can have a test suite, and you can you can kind of craft all this around. But nothing is going to beat having your coworkers go in and making making all of the little the little issues, right? And you're like, oh, well, I, I didn't even think of that, right? So you, you add another condition in there. You, you're able to tweak your automation and then you run it over and over and over and over and over again through this front end. You have everyone else running it through this front end. You get a very robust set of scripts or commands at the end of that. You have a, you have a really good process that is nailed down and that you feel confident in to then put into a, a broader process. Or, or here's the other thing you can do. If not orchestration, you can hand it off to someone who is maybe not necessarily as technically inclined. Like Rundex Overview states that you can give anyone self-service access to the operations capabilities that previously only your subject matter experts could perform. And, you know, Jack, you're... You're more expensive per per hour than someone who doesn't have your knowledge, right? Who doesn't sure. necessarily oh, have your skills. But you don't need your skills in order to grab rudimentary information and plug it into a front end and hit a button, right? Right. We all know that you know socks or knocks or, or general operation centers. They love having buttons, right? They have buttons to push and fields to fill out. They feel good. They have their their bumpers. They have their bowling lane bumpers, right? You, they don't have to worry about having too many variables or, or, or too many uh, unknowns thrown at them, right? They can. It's it's very easy for someone who is trying to start learning this to make make a actual difference right off the bat, right? This is right. this is where you're getting the best bang for your buck when it comes to these these uh, people who are just learning, who are trying to onboard, you know, you can you can really uh, have them return value to you immediately if you're able to give them something like this. Yeah, whereas... they ha- I really like the uh, bumper analogy. It's you're with you're stuck you're stuck you're it, it's a good thing that they're stuck because otherwise they'd be hunting around for parameters on these scripts or well, where are the scripts or where's the documentation for the script with the uh, automation front end you basically sign in and you say well i need to do this oh it looks like someone already wrote a job to do that or a uh, function to do that i'm just going to use what's already out there yeah, you it certainly beats be, an email no. back and forth to say, you know, right. what what do I need to run this? Well, you need these parameters. Well, where do I find those parameters? Well, you know, and you can have Man, the documentation for right, yeah, right. yeah. So I, I I I think it could be ridiculously useful for that case, and not only with you know lower level operation centers, but with other areas of expertise. So, for instance, uh, I have a, a script that gives pseudo access for our monitoring team, right? But it's limited in that it only accepts one user. It, it's only the functional user, and it's only the pseudo permissions that that functional user should have access to on any of our given servers. So, so the problem is if that server was overlooked or if those pseudo permissions were deleted or, or something for some reason went sideways, right? They now have a script to run that lets them do exactly what they're allowed to do without having to open a ticket to us. Right. That is ridiculously cool, right? Because what even though it saves you guys time. Yeah, it it saves yeah. us time and it saves us goodwill because we're allowing them to do their job. We're empowering them to do exactly what they need to do without having to get bogged down in the technicalities of, you know, I I need these pseudo permits, well, on which servers, you know, and it saves a lot of back and forth. So I'm I, I was really happy to, to do that and and that's a that's a different kind of, of bumpers to give them you know I'm we're able to give them just what they need like right just what they're self service right like a self service center type thing there rather than taking up your guys time on their own you know back and forth on reaching out and finding someone available they could just go in and say well I need this access and it's there for them it's already there for them 
And to to paraphrase a a movie very poorly, the age of the ticket is over. The age of self service has just begun. There is there's no better way I I think to to get goodwill, than to give someone to empower someone to say, hey, you can do it. You know that that even <laughs> feels good to hear, even if I'm not talking to you. Like you can do it. You're like, oh, oh really? That's that's awesome, right? And I'm like, yeah, I've you know here's here's what I'm able to give you and, 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 and you can do it yourself. You don't have to, you don't have to put in a ticket. You know, we don't have to go through a paperwork rigmarole. Let's just get you the ability to do what you need as quick as possible. So, um, run deck is one implementation of an automation front end. I'm not going to get into what I don't play around with right now because it, it has a, a whole bunch of different things from what it can connect to. Um, it's claim to fame is that, it is built to replace those scripts, just those scripts that need to be run on specific servers or at specific times or with specific parameters. It has really been built to be as flexible as possible with you know whatever connections that are necessary in order to go out and, and run exactly as you would as a regular logged in user. There's a, there's a breakdown here that I put uh, of the essential concepts, and and I kind of wanted to go over how Rundeck breaks itself down, uh, especially in terms of, of how we use it at our Compose. So there are several fundamental concepts that underlie and drive the Rundeck system. If you're a new user, knowing about them will help you use or integrate Rundeck into your environment. Fair enough. Um, so here we have projects and jobs, I think, are the two biggest ones, followed up with nodes and commands, execution, ACLs, and plugins. So I'm not necessarily going to talk about plugins uh, or nodes in depth, but I wanted to go into to some of those other ones. Uh, first of all, projects are probably the... Well, projects are the first thing you see when you log into Rundeck, and projects are groupings of jobs. It, the, the description here is a project is a place to separate management activity. All Rundeck activities occur within the context of a project, and multiple projects can be maintained on the same Rundeck server. So it is literally a, just a container uh, in which you can manage who has access to what jobs, and we'll get into that later when it comes to the ACLs. Uh, and then, then jobs themselves are a sequence of steps job options, and nodes where the steps execute. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here talking about jobs. Jobs are fairly flat in the hierarchy of projects. There's there's not a whole lot that gets shared among jobs. Uh, there, it's, it's, it's virtually flat where everything is kind of presented to you all at once. Now, there is a way to nest it and kind of give it a directory structure per se, but there's... There's not a whole lot that you would do in there that wouldn't be better done in projects. And I, I think a lot of what is going to be granted as far as permissions go is going to be done at the projects level rather than the job level. So jobs aren't necessarily for permissions as, as to who can run or do what on a job. It's, it's more like, what is, what is the actual automation that I want to implement? And a job runs several steps through connections and and connections are going to be ssh right they're going to be winrm uh, they're going to be a connection to ad they're going to be connection to kubernetes you know the rundeck like i said kind of branches out to, to all of these they, they they make an effort to work with all kinds of connections that it can latch on to to actually execute processes right so it's, it's going to have something that it can use to, to run what you need it to run. For the most part, I mean, Jack and I are, are familiar with, with CLI commands. So, so that's, that's pretty much what we use it to run. And we run CLI commands on the local server. So, so obviously, Rundeck is installed on a server. It has its user that it, it runs jobs as and that user can run CLI commands like anything else. Um, and since Ansible is a CLI command, Ansible playbook specifically, we use that functionality to run all of our Ansible commands. 
Now, now the cool thing is I have the entire server to play around with, right? So I'm storing stuff in temp, right? I'm using, well, not right now, but I could if I needed to use NFS mounts, right? I can do anything on a server that I could normally and just have this basically GUI front end on top of it that runs the commands on the local server that I need to. Uh, now, it does have additional functionality where it can reach out to another server over SSH and execute commands there. Um, it can pseudo to other users. It can do, you know, however you need it to. And I think this is where Rundeck really shines is that the level of granularity uh, of, of how you can get stuff to run is just mind boggling, right? Because th there are no restrictions other than what you can already do on a server anyways. Yeah, I really like that jobs because you can set up multiple steps in your job and you're going to have to correct me on this. So I, is it multiple job? It's it's one job, but it's different steps in that job. Different steps. Exactly. You know, projects are definitely the place to organize where you're going to put, you know, uh, different context. So obviously for us, I think of the example being our test environment, which is very bare versus what we use in production. And then we have our, you know, deploy instance, for example, is that job. But in that job, we have multiple steps and within those steps, they're running multiple different scripts rather than just calling, thinking of a job as a script, as one monolith script, it's able to do multiple things there. Yeah. And, and that makes it a lot easier to code these, these little one-off scripts and say, well, I just need this one script to do this one thing. Uh, and then combine that with a couple other steps. And then instead of writing documentation as, as to go to the server, run this one thing, go to the other server, run the second thing, and then wait for this to come up. And then, you know, you can, you can automate that with this front end as a series of steps that it, it runs down and it executes. Um, and it has the regular error handling, um, which for me is actually a little bit lacking. Uh, I would I would like it to be a little bit more unified, a little bit more abstracted from the actual specific step itself. But then again, I, I haven't really had a call to uh, dive deep down into it and, and, and abstract it away. It, everything that I'm, I'm doing has a error handling, but basically the error handling is clean up the server and then fail. So it's, sure. it's not exactly like it's, it's orchestrating itself, which I'm okay with because at this point, right, if I wanted to orchestrate stuff, I would abstract that to a higher level and say, all right, let's, let's get something else that interacts with my automation front end that also interacts with other services like monitoring it. Like it could be in itself a monitoring software that actually orchestrates the remediation of issues uh, through run deck. But if, if you don't need something like that, you just need automation front end, then, then run deck is going to be the front end to handle all that work. So, um, now of course this, this means that you're, you, the person who is working with run deck, who's setting run deck up, they're going to be the subject matter expert. They're going to know where the scripts are. They're going to be running the scripts. They're probably going to be maintaining the scripts too. Right. Um, however, this, once it's set up, can be handed off to whoever needs to uh, have access to those scripts. For instance, you know, let's let's take ourselves. So we we have jobs within Rundeck to uh, spin up a new environment, to fully deploy a new server, and to fully tear down a server. Right, and those are yeah. those are Ansible scripts that I think I've talked about previously. But having put them into Rundeck, I mean, either Jack and I can run them. Right. Not only that. We can also run them with the correct access. For instance, right. we have the secrets and and passwords and, and, and other different authentication mechanisms stored within Rundeck. So it has a way to securely store passwords, right? So then I don't have to go in and put a password in every time. As long as I'm logged in as myself and I have permission to run that, it already knows what password it needs to authenticate, what API token it needs to authenticate to these various services. So it, it can do that for us. Or, you know, it, in, in real, realistically, our case, it is simply holding the password to the uh, environment that it needs to unlock in, in order to get to that, uh, get to those passwords, to those API tokens that it needs. Right. So, so either way, it's still... Of it's it, it's a way for me to securely hold that password without having to 
keep on putting it in time and time again, or or even worse, put it in over the command line and have that in my history, right? right. It's right. definitely a more secure way of executing sensitive commands. Yeah, those ACLs, I know, I, I don't know if you said you're going to touch on them at all or not, but you can go over them with a fine tooth comb. You, you The way the granularity that you get with those ACLs is just mind boggling compared to, so, you know, run deck gives you that. You have your SME that builds it and maintains, sure, those scripts, but then you can say, all right, I need my monitoring team to have access to add themselves to this group, but I only need them to have some permissions, which gives them that ability. Rather than seeing a full-blown view of everything, they're only able to run their job exactly exactly and i think that's where it shines um i am interested to dive into run deck i think i'm going to keep this overview pretty short um because there there is a, a lot deeper that i could dive into here but i think i'm going to i think i'm going to save it so okay. that i can really drill down into some of the functionality that it provides okay um the 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 coolest thing though that I haven't touched, that I'm getting ready to, that I'm excited to, is the plugin system, which is literally, can be literally writing scripts that Rundeck executes as regular modules. So instead of me having to write the command out every single time, it has a, a pre-baked script that I can have that automatically prompts you for the the parameters that it needs or, or fills in and, and does the air handling on the back end. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, cause, cause right now, I mean, we're, we're literally just using raw commands uh, over and over and over again to, to sure. run these, these scripts. Cause that's all we need. Honestly, I just need a front end for Ansible. You and I didn't have to sit down and write an API and that's kind of where I think it fills our need is you and I didn't have to sit down and write, all right, this HTTP request, we have to authenticate ourselves. And we need it to do this. Yeah. Otherwise, we would because because right now we use Rundeck as a command and control server that Portal and Command Center run jobs from because that's our that's our central callback you know command and control server that it it authenticates to and it it runs jobs from because we know that's that's exactly how we need it to be, right? We're running those jobs manually and then portal on the back end is calling it. I mean, we're, we're, we're testing these over and over and over again frequently, um, trying to move at a fast pace. So we're able to, to have that functionality over an API rather than uh, having a, a manual command to log into a, a command and control server. server right? This, right, is, right. this is our front end that drives our automation. Hence my catchphrase, automation front end. <laughs> so I, I think Rundeck does a really good job of it, and I am interested to dig into it. Did you have anything else you wanted to add the interfaces or talk touch more on? I know I see the three there, the one more I would add. So the three I'm looking at, uh, if you're following along or not, uh, we have, he has web, web GUI, uh, command line interface, and the API. The one more I'd add, I, I don't know if I'd call it an interface, but they, they have their web hooks. I don't know if I'd call it an interface, but you can run a job manually. And then that webhook sends off a web request. I won't call it an API request. It sends off a web request to an external system. And from there, you're able to collect even more information that we, we do use that, especially in, so command center uses that to make calls out and then it receives a call back and then it makes another call out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in this case, command center is almost acting as our orchestration tool, uh, orchestrating the, the different subsequent runs and, and handling the failures as it needs to. Uh, through Rundex API. So I, I'm sure there's something I'm missing here. I was actually thinking about, I, I did a similar type talk for work on the, the system that we use there, the quick build, but I, I don't think I'm missing anything big. I'll, I'll circle back to it if I need to touch on something.